Welcome back. All right, so some more more news of the day for all you fine people for your Friday, February 24th. Uh, starting off with the Florida Panthers, whose logo is on the board twice. Starting with Spencer Knight has entered the uh, Player Assistance Program. This is an NHL and NHLPA joint program, and it is designed to help players going through whatever they're going through that is... Um, Maybe distracting from hockey. Maybe it's just it's more important than hockey, which certainly there are a lot of things that are more important than hockey. Uh, one thing that Friedman was quick to add to this, though, was that it's not believed to be alcohol or drug related. So whatever Spencer Knight is dealing with right now, I wish him the best. I do. Uh, wearing a Florida jersey because I figured, yep, um, you know, I like Spencer Knight. I think he's a good goaltender. I think he's got a really strong future. Um, being a goaltender in the NHL, not an easy job. So hopefully... Uh, he's not out for that long. Hopefully he's back relatively soon. Uh, this leaves Florida now with Bobrovsky as the guy who's going to play a lion's share of games. Bobrovsky makes good money. So uh, that's the situation where now Bobrovsky just has to up his game just a little bit uh, while Knight is out. Uh, waiver wire, a little bit busy in that Gravel has been placed on waivers by the Nashville Predators. I think he gets through. Uh, Kapanen, as reported earlier, was put on waivers in part because Jan Ruda is returning to the lineup. Now, if Kapanen clears, and he should, um, that gives them some cap relief, but not enough. So if Kapanen gets moved to the AHL, they're still going to have to make another move to have enough cap space to put Ruda in the lineup. Also, Ron Hextall was asked about the chant uh, when talking to the media today, uh, the chant about him needing to be fired. Uh, Penguins fans getting that going, and he said it's part of the job. Uh, his his goal at the deadline is to make Pittsburgh better. He also stressed, though, he doesn't want to overspend. So he doesn't want to trade away a bunch of future assets, which should make Pittsburgh fans feel a little better. Uh, because apparently Mike Sullivan wants Jacob Chikrin, but Ron Hextall doesn't want to pay the price that Arizona wants, which would include the 2025 first-round pick, 2026 first-round pick. If Pittsburgh traded their first-round picks two and three years down the road, that could be absolutely disastrous. This that would be a situation where you could be trading, you know, a top three, top four draft pick that far down the road for Chikrin, who would absolutely help Pittsburgh's blue line. He absolutely would at both ends of the ice. He's a very good 200 foot player, but at that cost, I, I agree with Ron Hextall that I think that's too much. They have, as I said in the video I did today on the Penguins. Um, enough of the future has been been mortgaged. So it sounds like for Pittsburgh, it'll be probably second tier players that end up being picked up, but it doesn't sound like he's selling either. So uh, Hextall understands how this works. Uh, not a surprise, but Drieger has cleared waivers for Seattle. So they waived him yesterday. I didn't think with that cap hit, the fact he still has term left, I didn't think he'd be an attractive target for a team looking to pick somebody up. And it appears that that was correct. Uh, Drieger... I hope, I hope gets his game back in Coachella Valley and is able to come up and play for Seattle um, whenever that's needed, whether something happens with Jones or Grubauer or whether it's into next season or something happens in the playoffs. I just hope whenever Drieger gets the call, he's ready to go. Uh, he's been out for quite some time. Uh, Boston, so this is something I stumbled upon on, that was reported on the Canucks forum that was reporting from somebody on Twitter saying, that the Bruins may not be done, and one sign they may not be done is in Providence. So in the American Hockey League tonight, both Mike Riley and Jacob Lauko are healthy scratches. Now, Riley's had a rough time of it, right? He's cleared waivers a couple of times this year. Lauko, I think, is a good player, and so they could very well be scratches because they anticipate trading those players. So Boston may not be done yet. Uh, the, the, the moves to get Orlov and Hathaway aside... Uh, they may be looking to make other moves. They have some cap relief with Riley's contract being in the AHL, but it doesn't relieve the entire contract. So if they're able to figure out some way to move out Riley's deal, it may allow them some more cap space and maybe Lauko's the sweetener to get somebody to take him. And I'm just throwing that out there because I don't know exactly what's going on at this point. But hey, who does? Um, so uh, Caden Gooley, regular jersey at practice for the Montreal Canadiens. So his return is imminent which is great because Montreal's blue line, very good, very young, uh, which is where the very good part can sometimes be clouded by mistakes. You're going to get mistakes with young defensemen. Um, you're probably going to end up seeing your shots against go up a bit with your young blue line too. But Montreal, 
honestly, I, I think that if they build properly this summer, and if, if the draft goes well for them this year too, uh, I don't think Montreal's going to be at the bottom for very long, and I think they're going to be a really fun team to watch, fast team to watch, not too far down the road. Um, getting back to Florida news, uh, I felt like these two items should be separated, so they are. Uh, Non-contact jersey today for Sasha Barkov. So it looks like Barkov's not going to be playing in tonight's game, uh, which is good news if you're the Buffalo Sabres for tonight's game. Uh, so, yeah, Barkov not in the lineup. That will make a difference. They've also called up Delpy and Denisenko. Of course, Duclair's making his debut tonight. They have confirmed that. We knew that anyways, but that has been confirmed by Florida. And they're excited to have Duclair in the lineup, and I agree. Uh, they'll miss Barkov, but this is a team with a lot of depth up front, and we've already seen Delpy step in for them at times this year and play relatively well. Denisenko as well. So we'll see how things go there. Um, Chernak. Eric Chernak, uh, right before recording this video, it was announced by Department of Player Safety. It's two games for Chernak for the elbow. Uh, so he gets two games. It is his second career suspension. I, I don't know how much that played into it, but they did mention the history. Now, uh, history is one of those interesting things where I'd always heard that I think it's two years. Anything past two years, they don't consider to be recent history. But at any rate, two games, I think is fair. And I think it was described properly. Um, he extends the elbow out and he tries to catch him in the head. If he had thrown a legal check, which is shoulder, um, and if he doesn't target the head, he's, he's, not, he's, he's not suspended for these two games. Uh, a lot of the time with defensemen, when they make a move that, whether it's kneeing, whether it's a trip, whether it's whatever it is that ends up getting them suspended, a lot of the time it feels like they're kind of caught out of position and they're reacting in the moment. And it's just something that, uh, that does end up getting them suspended. And that's what it looked like to me. I don't think there was premeditation in it, but it was it was a rough elbow, and uh, I thought it was because Chernak was kind of caught a little bit out of out of sorts. Uh, Marshawn has also been fined five thousand dollars for the trip last night on Bjork Strand, which caused some of the fracas we saw it in that third period. Uh, the the Bruins honestly they're playing well enough to win here and there. I thought that game last night. I kind of felt like you know if they get bailed out here. Um, and they, they did. They bailed themselves out and they won that one 6-5. to five. I'm just nervous because that was a really sloppy game they won. So I, I hope they tighten it up a little bit in the next one. But Marchand has started to get close to that line again. So hopefully this fine is that wake-up call. To Now, I've seen Bruins fans saying, hey, the, the, the play, he shouldn't have even been fined. It was clean. Bjorkstrand soft. I've seen that whole argument. But for me personally, watching Marshawn and the way he's been the last little while, it seems like he's really agitated. And when he's agitated during games, he does things that will get him noticed by Department of Player Safety. He has been suspended multiple times in his career. I hope this fine causes him to back up a little bit. Marshawn's one of the best forwards in the league when he's on his game. But when he's upset for whatever reason and it causes him to lash out on the ice... Uh, it, it can be tough. So hopefully this this straightens him out. Uh, Vancouver fans, however you may feel about this, Thatcher Demko feels like he's ready. So he's ready. He wants to be the backup tomorrow. The question mark I have in my head right now is, so if Delia or Seelovs, which of the two would I rather see? So if Demko comes back, which would I rather see in the, uh, in the tandem? Would I rather that it was Delia, who has a lot of NHL experience, especially in comparison with Seelovs, is older as well, and Delia at times has looked good. Or would I rather see what Seelovs is able to do for the rest of the season? Between now and the end of the season, just say, you know what, we'll give this kid an audition. I'm kind of leaning towards Seelovs, which is weird, because if you asked me that question two weeks ago, I would have said, Delia, of course. So we'll see what happens. But if Demko feels ready, um, and of course, keep in mind too, Delia would have to clear waivers, and I don't know that they'd want to waive another goaltender after Spencer, Spencer Martin cleared. Uh, I, I'm not as confident that Delia would necessarily clear as I was with Martin. Um, and Seelovs doesn't need waivers to go down. So that's probably the move they make. But I'm kind of leaning towards, I think it'd be fun to see Demko and Seelovs and see if that tandem might work for next season, right? But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to see Spencer Martin get another shot at the backup job next year in Vancouver. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Uh, it is one week until trade deadline. Uh, we'll have a live stream on the channel before the trade deadline. And, of course, we'll have a live stream during the trade deadline. 
Um, I do my best to report whatever trades are happening. We usually have a very active live stream where a lot of people reporting these trades are coming in. There have been times where the trades have been reported during the live stream before they're on the television. So um, it is it, it can be a bit bonkers and it is usually one of the most enjoyable bonkers days that this channel has. So don't forget to tune in for that. I'll figure out the timing of that. I'll make sure it's posted well in advance so that people can know uh, when it's going to be getting started and all the fun uh, begins there. So let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit um, don't, don't forget to hit both of those buttons. And thank you guys so much for all your support. As always, I will talk to you again soon.